Welcome to this series on VEX. In this part, we're going to start with the very basics, covering what are variables, attributes, and inputs. And then in future parts, we're going to be working our way up, covering functions and channels and combining this stuff all together. So let's get started and jump into Houdini. What I'm going to do is drop down a sphere. And let's just make it a polygon. So we've got some points and primitives to run over. So let's take a look at our geometry spreadsheet and drop down a right angle. So what is the difference between an attribute and a variable? Well, a variable is something that exists inside the code. And once we come outside of it, it's gone, it's disappeared. So if I drop down a null, just so we can view this at the end. And let's take a look at this. So the first one we're going to look at are integers, and they are whole numbers. 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2,000. And for a variable, we use int, which stands for integer. So if I say int i1 is equal to 5, and we take a look at our null, we can't see i1 here. That's because it's a variable and exists inside this code. To create an attribute which is stored on our geometry, on our points or prims, and carried forward, we use the at symbol attribute. So i at, and let's call it i2. Let's say that is equal to 10. So you can now see if we take a look at the null, we've got i2 as an integer on our points, and it's stored there. If I go ahead and create an i3, and I use the random function, which we'll look at in a bit more detail later on. So I create a random number between negative 10 and 10. You can see here we have an i3 value, and each point has a different random integer. The next one we're going to look at are floats, and they are numbers with decimal places. They're fractional numbers. So let's create a float, call it f1, and let's give it a random number. And you can see here on our null, we don't get f1, because again, it's a variable. To save this as an attribute, we use the f, and let's go f2 equals And now you can see on each point, we've got that float value. And if I go ahead and create a float free, and let's use exactly the same random that we use for our integers. And now you can see here, we've got a float random number between minus 10 and 10. So you can see for an integer, it gave us a value of negative one, but for a float, it gave us negative 1.655. And again here, gave us an integer of 2, but for this one it's 2.355. So a lot more data is stored inside the float because of that decimal floating point number. However, there will be instances where we want to use an integer, such as an ID. Another type of one we can add is a vector. Now, position is a vector because it's got three components, x, y, z. Color is also a vector. Let's add a color quickly, because you can see we've got R, G, B. So vectors are generally three floats or three integers in one attribute or one variable. And we use the vector command. So vector v1 equals one, two, three, and we can use this squiggly bracket to determine a vector, or we can also use the set v2 equals set, and you can see four, five, six, and that also sets a vector. But as both of these are variables, they don't appear here in our geometry spreadsheet. I'm just going to go turn this color off for a second. But we can use v at, and that is our vector attribute. 
So I'm going to choose 7, 8, 9. And you can see here we have the 3, 7, 8, and 9. Now it's using 0, 1, and 2 uh, instead of x, y, z, or r, g, b. And that's just how vectors are stored. Again, for p, you could use 0, 1, 2. So p0 is actually px. And for cd, if I turn color back on, uh, you've got 0, 1, and 2. So if you were to use cd.1, it actually refers to the g part. So we've got integer, float, and vector. Another one we've got is a string. And a string is just a set of characters. So string equals, or oh, we need a name, so s1 equals hello. And again, because I've made it a variable, we don't see it here in our geometry spreadsheet. But if I use s at s2 and say hello world, you can see here we've got s2 is world. Now, because a string is stored as characters, it's not stored as a number. So if I was to say s3 equals one, two, three, four, you see here we've got one, two, three, four, but it's not a number in the sense that Houdini sees it. It doesn't see it as a number, it sees it as characters, as a string. So we can't do any mathematical operations on it while it is a string, but we can go through converting it from string to integers, string to floats later on. So those are our four main types of variables and attributes, integers, floats, vectors, and strings. And you can see here I'm running over points. So on our vertices and on our primitives and on our detail, there's nothing there. I could go ahead and grab another wrangle. And this time I could run over primitives. So if I go i at i1 equals 65. If I now go, let's call it i9 just so we can see it. So on our points, you can see there is no i9, and that's because we're running over primitives. So let's go to our primitives, and you can see we've got an i9 there. The same for floats, f at f9 equals 98.76. And again, I can do the same for, the, for vectors and for strings. And this assigns it to every single primitive. So you can see how it's static for every prim. But again, if we use a f at f8 equals random f prim num, it's going to give me a different random float for every primitive number. Finally, we could run over vertices or details. Now, vertices are those where a point is on a primitive. So if we take a look here, we've got information. We have 42 points, but 240 vertices. That's because this point here, let's take a look at this one. While it's a single point, it's actually got six primitives attached to it. So it's got six vertices on that single, on that single point right there. It's got six vertices. And the most common attributes you might have on vertices are normals and UV values. And then finally, we have detail. And the detail is stored on the whole object as one. So let's create a wrangle and take a quick look at a detail. I at I zero equal 45. You can see here it's stored once. It's just a single point. Imagine it's a single point or a single primitive. It's just stored once. What that does mean is then we can't use um, PT num or prim num because PT num and prim num they don't exist. You know because we're just running over the single single thing once. We can go through that later on.
So that's the basics of variables and attributes, integers, floats, vectors, and strings. Let's take a quick look at inputs. Now I've created a load of spheres here with varying point counts, just to demonstrate. Let's go ahead and grab a wrangle. And in this example, I only need to run over the object once. So let's go to detail. So you can see we've got four inputs. If we hover over the first one, you can see that it says it's the geometry to process with the wrangle. So whatever we plug into the first one is what it runs over. And then we've got other inputs that we can use to access data. So let's go ahead and connect these two some spheres. Now I'm going to be using a function called endpoints. And this gives me the number of points. So let's go i at n1 equals endpoints. You can see here it says returns the number of points on the input geometry. Now to access this first one, I need to use zero as its input zero. The same when we're looking at vectors, you know, it goes naught, one, two. Or when we're looking at arrays, the first number in an array or the first object in an array will actually be at position zero. So let's grab zero. And let's take a quick look at our geometry wrangle. Oh, our geometry spreadsheet, sorry. You can see here in one has 42 points. So now let's go all right, in two points and to access this second input I want to use number one it's got 162 points let's do the same thing again Put in three again it's going to be oh, I need to make sure it's classed as an integer if I don't put it as an I it will assume it's automatically a float but I want it to be an integer so I need to put I at to confirm it's that integer Two and finally in four equals n points three. Great. So I've got forty-two points coming in on this fit. I've got 162 coming in on this one, six four two, etc. And I can use zero, one, two, and three to access the zero, one, two, and three. Now I can also create some spare inputs. So let's go ahead and Add a spare input and let's add another spare input as well. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this node. I should want to put that node in here. So, sphere six. Cool. And in this one, I want sphere seven. Amazing. And you can see there's a little blue dotted line to tell me it's connected via a spare input. How do we get access to these spare inputs? Well, we go negative. So, i at in five, ooh, i at in five equals n points. So to access the spare input zero, we go negative one. There we go. And i at in six equals n points negative two. And we can have as many spare inputs as we want. So I could create 10 spare inputs and I can access them by negative one, negative two, negative three, etc. So that's how we can use other inputs to access information and attributes on those inputs using 0, 1, 2, 3 and negative numbers for our spare inputs. I hope you found that useful. We covered some of the basics of VEX covering variables, attributes, and inputs. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.